Jordan Love looked great week one, looked great week two, and yeah. then completely fell off a cliff, and now he seems like he's back. Is Jordan Love a franchise quarterback? I, listen, I don't think we know yet. Uh, I, I do agree with what the guys William. have said, Willie, Greg, Plax, and the guys that have been on the show, uh, you know, Victor as well, that he does get the benefit of an entire season. He's yeah. essentially a rookie, right? I'm just saying that he's not you know, chronologically a rookie, but he's had moments where you're like, wow, that kid can really play. Then we've also seen moments where you're like, uh-oh, they're in trouble moving forward at the quarterback position. What amazes me is the, the arrogance, the cockiness of we own them. We've got their number. I appreciate the game being circled. You know, divisional game, Detroit's the toast Thanks of the town the sure. and all that. So I, I appreciate that. And like you always talk about, you know, Steelers, Ravens, Bengals, and Browns. Yep, yep. Those games mean something to you, regardless of what your record is at the time. Yep. So I want to be sensitive to that because I appreciate that, right? But to me, if I'm Detroit, I'm pissed oh, because I am the better team. And this kid's accomplished very little thus far in the NFL. And to talk about how, essentially, in paraphrasing, we own them, like, you know, we're their daddy kind of stuff, like, slow your roll, buddy. Like, the Green Bay Packers, even with the win yesterday, are still under 500 yes. at 5 and 6 and in third place in their division. In the eighth seat, by the way, right? So they got a shot. They're on the outside looking right. in, but they're mathematically alive. Correct. But we talked a little thing about uh, from the great Mike Tomlin called football justice, right? Remember football yes. justice? Yes, yes. We witnessed football justice yesterday because, uh, as you mentioned, Jacoby, the first two, we're like, man, Jordan Love looks great. And then we didn't find him more. He was bad. And then we started questioning if he was even worthy of being on the field for the Green Bay Packers. When you saw it right out the gates, Christian Watkins, right? That was the first big play but through the game he took shots he was on the money yeah. and there was some yeah. big drops through the game so if you if there was any question if the Green Bay Packers have a franchise quarterback stop it right now he's your guy now you have to build around him and you gotta also got to understand the Packers had seven key injuries out there well, was some, there was a lot me, of guys let out me, for that let me, if I can let me compartmentalize a little bit of that with you right a lot of this came also had to do with what Detroit didn't do well and that's you know uh, fumbles turning the ball over yep. you want to give Green Bay's even some, some of that credit for Sean sure Gary had I'm with you yeah I'm with yeah. you on that but if we focus on Jordan Love here for a second, look, Jordan Love is going to come back next year. He should. As their starting quarterback, yes. their incumbent quarterback, I have no quarrel with that at all. We don't know yet if he's a legitimate franchise quarterback. And I know I'm nitpicking words here, but is he a starting quarterback? He's had great moments yes. this year and some lousy moments, which is apropos of being an inexperienced first-year quarterback. But I don't know yet so give me if he's the leader of a franchise. I'm with you. I'm, uh, give me your definition of a franchise quarterback. Franchise player is the best player on the field for his team on offense. And he he's wasn't the reason yesterday? he went. He was. He's had moments. He's also had moments where he was the worst quarterback in the league. He's had bad moments. AKA there. football justice. You have to wait. You, you need time. For a guy like him, especially a young guy, to show you he's bad. Because you got to fail before you win. That's the bottom I'm line. I'm with you on that. And that's what we witnessed last night. So he was ugly, then he's great. Last night, and he's going to continue. Now you got the Chiefs. Look, he, he had, he had a good game. I'm not, I don't want yeah. to be clear. I'm not taking a shot. I'm saying I don't think you can answer the question definitively yet. He's clearly their future for now. Okay. He's going to be their starting quarterback next year. And I do think he's earned that right. Yes. He's not a $30 million a year dude yet. He's not that no, level. No, 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 no. So that's what, like, if you take, you know, if we all, if you take the second tier of great quarterbacks, let's say that second tier of great quarterbacks has a guy like Josh Allen. Sure. Right? He's not Mahomes, but he's right under, okay? I think Love's right under that. I don't think he's in that conversation yet. Uh, I, I, I don't fault you. But my also, when you talk about franchise quarterback, it's the ability to put butts in seats. They're going to come to watch this kid play, right? And what you saw last night was a kid who was confident out the gate. Out the gate. He didn't yeah. waver. This wasn't run the ball, dink and dunk. He just hit big shots. Down we all the decided that this was the year that Jordan Love needed to prove that he deserved the spot, and I think he did so this year. Yeah, I think he's that. proven that he's good, yeah. and he's clearly going to be QB1 for them next year, and he'll get a new contract out of it. But I'm not yet going to invest $150 million in that kid. Like, you've got to do it with some level you. of consistency. Like I said, you got the Chiefs next week, Patrick Mahomes, we'll see yeah. what he looks like. Like, we always talk about who are the top 10 quarterbacks in the league. He ain't one He's of them. In the I give you that. I give you that. To a top 10 quarterback in the league, That's a tough I quote think for that me. they will beat the Eagles this weekend. Yeah. Craig, I know you're with me. No, you're yeah, not. but the problem is you saying it, you don't back it up. <laughs> you're, a, you're a Bills fan saying, I think my team's going to win. Yeah. But I can't tell you why. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. 
I like. I want to go back to that quote for a minute because that's not like the most uh, confidence-inspiring quote from a franchise quarterback. It was, I'm going to trust the process, not the results. Mm. I used to say that when I was single. All right? <laughs> and you say that when you're not talking from a place of confidence. Right. All right? Keep shooting. Like, I know the results stunk, but baby, the process. <laughs> like, right. I, you know, all the things I did. No question. Um, Cheesecake fat. Yeah, you know, that's my issue because you're not judging the NFL on the process. You're judged on the results. And that's an excuse like, hey, we might have lost that game, but we did a really good job in preparation and our gameplay. Like, no. It's the results that are more important than the process. Fans don't care what your process is. We care that when we're leaving the stadium, having just bought a $30 beer, right, and a $15 hot chocolate and $40 on parking, that you won. We don't care how you yeah. won. We just want you to win. But let's talk about the results. He has 29 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. By the way, this is his sixth year. Well, and right? here's the rub on that. He leads the league in both. Right. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, go back to the Jets game. They took the ball out of his hands. They ran the ball 38 times, and they yep. had to because they were terrified that the wild cowboy was going to come out because he felt like he had to dominate against the Jets. And he got his OC fire, right? Joe Brady, at the end of the day, he understands who Josh Allen is. He wants to make it fun, but he doesn't want, he doesn't want to be bored. He doesn't want complacency. But doing that, they have have to get the run game going. It can't go through Josh Allen's hands like right now. And so when he talks about the process, the process is you got to get the run game going. Because when you, we've seen in games, if he, when he's great, he's great. But when he's bad, four interceptions. Right. This shovel. Slamming slam tablets on the sideline. They can't have that anymore, especially if they want to make a run. To well, look, I can tell you this. I know, listen, the, I, the, the, the spread in this game bothers me because I can't rationalize why a 9-1 football team at home is only favored by right, three, three, three yeah, and a yeah, half yeah. against a team that's been up, down, up, down, up, down. And even though they just beat the Jets and scored 32 points on the Jets' defense, we all kind of look at the game as, it's the Jets. Like, what's that mean, right? Yeah. Um, so what I'm concerned about in this game is there are times you have to look at the spread and go, well, what's that spread telling me? Like, why aren't the Eagles a six-point favorite in this game? Which is what I think they should be. Yeah. You know, maybe even a touchdown favorite. And the spread has gone the other way. It's gone towards Buffalo. It hasn't gone up since it first came out. Uh, look. If the Bills run the ball well, and it's the biggest if on the planet, Josh Allen doesn't turn the ball over, the Bills can hang with anybody, yeah, including Philly. My concern is not the Bills' offense. I think they will score. My concern is how you stop DeAndre Swift. Mm. And I think he becomes the key to the Eagles' offense going forward because he's as good a running back as there is in the league. And my concern for the Bills' defense is getting shredded by Swift and then coming up to stop him and getting beat deep by A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And I think that's on the table. Hey, and watch out. Jalen Hurts is running now. And so that's another key you can yeah. to their offense. All right, we'll, we'll address this on Monday after the Bills win. And <laughs> moving on to third in football, Chargers running back Austin Eckler supported his head coach, Brandon Staley, who a lot of people have been talking about. He said the following, quote, I think he's almost taking too much of the blame. It's my fault. It's Herbert's fault. Whoa. It's Quinn Johnson. It's me fumbling the ball. Staley is not out there making the plays. We have to make the plays. How do you feel about Austin Eckler's support of Brendan Staley? Well, first and foremost, he's wrong. And Staley's going to get fired after this year. That's a lot. Number Three two, <laughs> it's one thing if you want to attack you're a franchise quarterback who's got a guaranteed 200 plus million dollars coming his way because who cares? I'm getting paid. But Quinn Johnson is a rookie, yeah. right? Yes. And while he's had a disappointing rookie season, and he obviously has had some drops that we've uh, you know, all kind of yeah. you know magnified here, you know, week to week, I, that would piss me off. Like if, if Willie came out and goes, yeah, look. Uh, it's not Zach, our executive producer's fault. Oh. It's Carton's fault, <laughs> and it's Jacoby's fault. I'd be like, what's up? I go, talk about yourself. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? This is all like, sexy sense. Right. <laughs> right. So, you know, to me, it's, look, I don't disagree with the notion that the coach can't tackle. The coach can't right. tell the quarterback to throw the ball to the open man. The coach can't make Quentin Johnson yeah. hold on to a ball. That we also hit him in the hands. But... When you are the head coach and you came in specifically as a defensive guru from those Rams yeah. teams and your defense is the culprit of why you lose so many games, we're in a win business. And when you commit 
a couple hundred million dollars to a quarterback who's as good as any quarterback in football, you got to win. Uh-huh. And they don't win. I don't. I don't doubt that. But if you're if you're Brandon Stanley, you're finally saying somebody's come to my defense, right? Yeah. And somebody's. Well, finally- I guess Eckler wants more carries. <laughs> <laughs> right. But listen, every time we watch this man, he's under attack. Why is the defense underperforming? Who's calling the plays? Why are you so bad? Well, and he he sits there time after time and he takes shots. Nobody in the locker room says, stay off my coach. This is the first player, the starting running back, by the way, who's been bewildered with injuries and out of the lineup, has said, hey, back off him. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a fan of the fact that he's held some accountability because they have yeah, played I'll give that. You that. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But yeah, I mean, if you're Staley, like, thank you. Do, like, do, do you think off. Staley, if they lose to the Ravens, do you think that he keeps his job next week? No, yeah, he's, he's going to coach them throughout the season. this season. Yeah, I think he's going to so. yeah. yeah. be their coach Listen, next year. It's yeah. very rare in the NFL. It does happen, but it's rare for multiple teams to fire head coaches midseason. Because when you get to this part of the season, unless you've got a coordinator that you really just want to get a sense of, could he be a a head coach one day, or you want to give a loyal uh, soldier a chance, you don't fire guys midway through the season. Staley survives the season, but he ain't coming back. No. And obviously the big name that's going to be out there Bell is, check. you know, would the Patriots do a interconference oh. trade? Mm-hmm. And would, they, would the Chargers give up a first-round pick or multiple first-round picks to go get Bill Belichick? That's on the table now. Yeah. But there's no way that Staley comes back because consider this. One playoff appearance, zero playoff wins. Like, oh, you know, you know and by the way, you're in a division with Patrick Mahomes and you do nothing. Yeah. Like, now, if no... Stanley comes out tomorrow and goes, I agree with Josh Allen. It's about the process, not the results. <laughs> 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 hey there. Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out, too.